I'm Sean from Composibold, and today I'm going to show you how to build a robot. I'm using this robot as my starting point. I've already unscrewed most of them. So I'm going to start with molding his legs. And I'm going to use some clay to fill in the voids. So it's easier to release from the mold. I could do it in separate sections. But I'm taking the easy way and just doing it all at once. And I'm using Sculpey oven bake clay. I'm going to line my mold box with this plastic bag. So composing will does not leak out of the box. Now I'm going to anchor the robot's body to the bottom of the box by using this clay. Now I'm going to spray it with Mold release using just regular baking spray. Now you're going to want to spray with Bubble Buster. What this does is it reduces the surface tension and allows bubbles to rise instead of form around the part. So. And this you want to do a pretty heavy coat. got some composite mold that I've already melted. So I'm going to pour this over it. The mold has been sitting overnight, now it's time to remove it. Now it's time to remove the robot's legs from the mold. Now that the robot's removed, I'm going to tape up the cracks. This way, when I pour the casting material, nothing will leak out. Just using regular packing tape. For the robot's legs, I'm going to use composite stone, which can be found on our website. Posimold.com slash store. And I've already created one. Here's what it looks like. So now I'm just gonna show you how uh, how it was done. So here's some composite stone I already have in a bucket. Now I'm just gonna have to mix it with water. The mixture ratio is about um, two parts composite stone to one part water, so I just have to mix water um, like this, and 
Here's the water. It's already pre-measured. The 2 to 1 is by weight or volume. And that ratio varies depending on the size. Larger parts you would need more water just because it composite stone solidifies really quick. So let's get started. Mixed up and ready to pour. So now I'm going to remove the robot's body from the mold. Here is the mold of the arm. You can see the arm through it there, transparent. Here's what it would look like. And the other arm, same thing. And here's the head. So I finished molding the molding and casting the head. So here's the new creation. And I ran some LED lights to light up the eyes. And I'll show you how I did that. There's three different colors. I did blue, red, and green. So there's the blue one. So for the urethane, I used PureCast 605, which is a 100 parts A to 13 parts B mix ratio by weight or volume. It's, uh, it cures to be semi-transparent, but I added a black pigment to it, and then I tried to leave the semi-transparent in its eyes so that I could see the LEDs through it, as you can see. So all you do is you, you mix A and B together at 13 to 100 and then pour it into your mold and wait about two to three hours for it to completely harden and then you can take it out. As far as the wiring goes, I took six LED lights. So you can see the LED has a short leg and a long leg. I wired all these short legs together because they just need to go to the uh, negative side on your battery. And then I left the positive or the long side of the LED. So these are the long side and this is the short side or the negative. So these are going to go to an Arduino um, input or output. So, what I did was I used a one of these that are called barrels instead of soldering. is you take this tiny little barrel, stick it on your LED and your wire. Then just 
crimp it together. And as far as the body, what I did was I did the slush cast. I used Protocast 85R, which can be found on composimold.com slash store website. Same with the PureCast 605 that can also be found on our website. But this one, what I did was I kind of slush cast it. So I mixed a little bit and just kept going around in circles so I can get this coated with a, a layer. And I did that about three times. So that gave me a nice hollow piece. Now I can fit in the electronic devices in here, the batteries, the Arduino, the wires, all that. Here's the Protocast 85R. It's a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume and 100 parts A to 86 parts B by weight. And it's pretty liquidy. Its viscosity is not much more than water. So for one of the arms, I'm going to make it out of paper. I'm going to do decoupage and the light paper clay. The light paper clay can be found on our website. And decoupage is made by mixing 50% water to 50% Elmer's glue. Using that as your paste to paste on pieces of colored tissue paper. So I split it in half so I could easily press the paper down in into, into the small areas and then after I'm done I'll glue the two halves together. So let's get started. Now it's time for the Delight Paper Clay. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of red color to it, so... Here's some food coloring. Make sure I put on gloves so my hands don't get stained. Basically, just put a little bit in, alright, so now all you do is push it into the mold. So this has been sitting overnight and I'm going to pull it out. So now I pulled it out and here it is. So I'm just going to have to clean it up a little bit, trim it, glue it together. So I just glued the two halves together. And now I'm going to clean it up a little better. Clean these seams up.
So I'm going to cast the other arm out of silicone. Now I've got the silicone all mixed. All I have to do now is pour it into the mold. So it's been about a day since I poured the silicone. Now it's time to remove it. Let's see what it looks like. Here's the original. So we've shown you how to use a lot of different kinds of casting materials to create all the different pieces for this robot. Now we're going to make it a cohesive unit with a little bit of painting. We're going to be using an Arduino Micro to give the robot a voice and make its eyes turn on and off. So I picked up this car that's recordable and I'm going to pull the uh, sound out and give him a voice. Here's what the inside of the car looks like. So I'll be able to record my voice by holding down record this button. Your message after the beep. All right, so I finished wiring the robot, and now I have it remote controlled, so I can control the lights when they go on, and then the voice. So here I've got the Arduino, and I've got the LED lights hooked to the Arduino's outputs. Uh, they're hooked to pin 6, 7, and 8. And then the ground is hooked to the ground on the Arduino. And here I have the receiver. And the receiver is also hooked to the Arduino. The power is coming to 5 volts on the Arduino and the ground on the Arduino. And then there's the control, which is hooked to pin... Um, five on the Arduino, right there. So, also hooked to the receiver is the switch going to the, to the speaker, right here. So here's the Arduino code that I found online, um, basically by Nick Poole, I found, which I modified for the robot. Basically, I have my inputs and outputs here. So my input being the receiver and the output being the LED lights and the, well, yeah, each of the LED lights. Then I have my channel one, channel two, channel three. I'm only using channel one. So basically, if channel one is, if it reads a value above 1700, it'll turn the LED light on. If it's below, it'll go low, and if it's below 1200, then the other LED light goes on, and if it's greater than 1200, it goes off. So here I have the controller, and when I press it up, the green eyes go on, and when I go down, the blue eyes go on, and when I go to the side, the sound goes on. side and down and up, you'll have the sound and the lights. So that's how it works.